two different sections, and then the whole, you know, target distribution center. There's inbound, there's warehouse, and there's outbound. Okay. So the products first, you know, they come through inbound. You know, they they come from the, you know, the trucks. They come up and drop off the, you know, the, the supplies. You know, whatever we ordered. And now warehouse. Basically, this is where we store products uh, if it's not needed immediately. And so, um, when it's when the, I guess we get a signal to warehouse if one stuff is needed, then we go. It goes to outbound, and from outbound, people you know they load the trucks, you know, for ind individual stores, and so. And once we load the trucks, you know, it maybe takes maybe two, maybe one day to fill one truck, and so. And there's about I think 97 stores or 67 stores that we they service, and so, and then it's all over a region. It's uh, I think it's. Iowa, Minnesota, there's some parts in Nebraska. Now outbound, basically right here, um, these are when the employees, they load the trucks. You know, um, whenever a truck is loaded, there's a switch that, you know, you turn on. They, they notify the driver that, you know, the truck's already filled, and so we switch it, you know, basically it's a enter or do not enter switch. And so once we switch the lights red, on our side it means they already, you know, the truck's basically in the process of pulling out the products. From there, basically, it goes all to the stores. It was not first mentioned in the three that we had, but there's also a uh, the human resources, which is the HR. Uh, they just cover the employees that are going to work in each individual section. They cover things with the employees, such as their checks, maybe the time cards, uh, shifts, stuff to that extent. Because clearly, you're not going to get workers if you're not paying them, and the time cards as well as the shifts, it's very difficult because if you think about it, when someone works in a warehouse, they're only working in the warehouse unless they've been cross-trained to work in the warehouse and the outbound, and then they'll move them around as they see fit throughout the day. Uh, a lot of the workers, you know, uh, they don't overstaff themselves. They keep it so they have the appropriate amount that they need. They have specific shifts. Therefore, if someone wants to request off a shift, they have to find someone else to cover for them. Or they might have so many people on uh, layover so they can take them in whenever they need. How Target came about, you know, to come to move to Cedar Falls, they used uh, the center of gravity. Uh, formula, I guess also, you know, Cedar Falls, you know, relatively cheap to, you know, to run a, a business and there's a bunch of land. And so the history, I guess there's 42 um, distribution centers throughout America. No more located in Canada, so it's just purely in America. And I guess the, the DC here that's in Cedar Falls, they just built it in 2003. Um, they said that you can basically run a mile around the building. So like we're over here, here's Basically, the, the, you can run a whole mile, you know, that's how big, you know, the warehouse is. Right, when it comes to the four V's, Target uh, excels in all the different areas. Uh, when we discussed in class to keep costs low, uh, you want a high volume, but also a low variety, low visibility, as well as low variation. Um, obviously, being a distribution center for a large company, they're going to do a lot of different volume. There's uh, many trucks coming in every day. Um, they're putting out millions of products each year to the stores, uh, and that type of volume helps keep uh, the distribution active and the cost low. Uh, variety is also low. Uh, many of the duties of the employees as well as the distribution center are well-defined and routine, and so the employees know what they have to do when trucks come into the distribution center. Um, when it comes to visibility, uh, it's also low. Many of the final purchasers of products don't know uh, kind of how the product got there, so the distribution center can do their work out of, out of the light, and, and that also keeps costs low. And variation, also like I said, they're doing many of the same things every day. Uh, there's not a lot that changes at the, at the distribution center, uh, so that is also something that Target excels at. Uh, for competition, one big thing that we did that everyone believes is Walmart's the biggest competition of Target, which isn't necessarily true just because Walmart's such a powerhouse. So uh, generally for the storefront, we wouldn't think that, but since we're covering mostly the distribution center, we like to believe Amazon is the main competitor, specifically because both of them have shipping out constantly trying to get customers to order from them online. So uh, unlike Amazon though, Amazon will ship it directly to your house and but Target will ship it to one of their storefronts. Though they do have a lot of aspirations to someday start shipping to your house directly instead of the storefront, therefore making it more convenient on each uh, consumer. 
So when you're thinking about the target distribution center, you need to know their supply network that involves much more than just one uh, firm and one enterprise. So here's a chart about one specific uh, item that is televisions. So when you're thinking about televisions and uh, you see the first tier consumers, it could be the e-commerce e consumers, so the online customers, and also target stores. So once the television is on target stores, it goes to the second tier consumer, and they are actually the final co customers, the guys who just go inside the, the shop and buy it for themselves. Uh, in the other hand, when you're thinking about the suppliers, the first tier supplier is the assembly, so it would be Sony televisions or any other manufacturer. And since they don't produce everything they use, they have the second tier uh, suppliers that would be the microchip suppliers, the cardboard suppliers, and all the other stuff they assemble together to make the, their products. All right, the five performance objectives are important to look at when analyzing a company's operations. And the first one is flexibility. Um, Target is a large retailer, but they aren't as large as some of their competitors. So flexibility can be an area where uh, they lack sometimes. They aren't able to get new products or products out as fast as they um, want to and as fast as competitors uh, might be able to do that. Um, but one area that they do uh, very well at is quality. Uh, they've made a name for themselves when it comes to having a nice storefront that customers want to visit and their distribution center is no different. Um, their distribution center is, is well kept and they do things in a very efficient manner. manner. Uh, their technology as well as machines in the dis distribution center um, are quality machines and uh, it's a top focus for them as a company. And now speed, you know, uh, Target, you know, they want to meet their, their customer needs, you know, as soon as possible. So they do value speed, you know, this performance objective really, uh, they do value that a lot. And so whenever I guess a customer orders or goes to, you know, to Target store, you know, they want to have, you know, the product on, in stock. And so whenever uh, DC, they want to make sure that each store has, you know, enough product whenever certain times, you know, of the year. And so, yep. Uh, for dependability, this is a top one for the, the distribution center. Uh, if customers visit a Target store looking for a product, it needs to be there for them to purchase. Uh, and if the distribution center is not performing accurately, the product uh, will not get to the store. So it must be very dependable with their shipping um, and getting the things to the store that they need uh, in the time that they need them. And now cost, I guess you wanna keep costs low uh, but still be, you know, on top. And so whenever internal costs, you know, they apply, you know, they apply people at the DC and certain wages, you know, that it's really, you know, attractive to people to come work, you know, put in a lot of effort. And so in, uh, external costs, I guess, you know, the products, you know, it's high, high quality product, of course, you know, uh, they, they do, you know, value that a lot too. So, you know, of course, when you go into a Target store, you know, everything looks really nice, you know, everything's nice and clean, you know, friendly staff. And so that's where the cost, you know, really uh, factors, you know, externally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as we already talked about uh, with the performance objectives, to do well in one of them, you do have to trade off on some others. Uh, we talked about quality being a key one for Target. That's what they've made their name out of. Um, but they do excel in many of the other areas like dependability, speed, and cost. Uh, and as we talked about, flexibility is a little bit lower as they are smaller than some of their competitors. Right, so some of the strong areas that we believe the distribution center had was a very clear direction from following their goals, which just means they know exactly what they want and they're doing exactly what they need to do to get to those goals, as well as some of the improvements that we discussed earlier that they're trying to make. Uh, their online presence as well as a storefront. These two, in cooperation with each other, really helps them out so they can consistently sell to people. If you need something, you can order it online or you can just go to one of their stores and you can find it there. Uh, the strong emphasis on speed, as we also said in one of our previous slides, they're really good at getting stuff out when they need it to be there. Uh, generally, if you go to Target, it's gonna be well stocked or at least they try to restock it at least twice a week. So unless there's a huge rush on something and they didn't plan on it, it's gonna be there. As well as changes though, we thought one big thing was to make strong advancements with the online store. Uh, they're gonna be doing that and they hope to kind of be able to compete with Amazon, but this is a main point that they really need to do because the online presence is present. 
but it could be more prevalent and would really benefit their business.